a pleasure to invite Jacqueline or Jax, I think uh, you prefer to go by, um, to share her story of launching Viva Engage at Manchester Airports Group and connecting people through community. So um, in the interest of time, I'll just stop talking and say, Jax, feel free to uh, jump off mute, share screen and share your story. Hello. OK, two seconds. Always a test, this bit, isn't it? Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody can see the slides. I'm guessing, Pete. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Um, and it was, it's been really interesting actually sitting and listening to those to, to Freya's presentation and actually what Regin just said about connecting colleagues. Um, and one of our our values is people at our core, and so actually our strap line apart from conversation you'll see some strap lines we used around conversation but it's connecting people through community so I think she's spot on with that description and the power of Viva Engage for us I also feel like I need to do a quick nod to Freya because I feel so far um we've been much luckier to not have those quite significant challenges that I think she's had around content moderation and um, but I'm going to share the story that we've had at Manchester Airports group how we roll Viva Engage and got it to the stage that we're at now. We, when I did this presentation, put put the deck together, we were six weeks in, so we're probably about eight weeks now. Um, and hopefully it will in inspire people and totally open to questions. Um, so let me make sure my mouse is on the right screen. Um, so this is where we we started and, and this isn't our first go. So Yammer, as it was formerly known, was in the business for about four years. I've been with MAG nearly five years and it was the first project that I was given really to embed um, within our, our colleague sort of culture. And it was really sort of hit and miss and it was very slow trickle and very slow adoption and rolling it out as a purposeful, committed commu communication channel, engagement channel was something that made at that point the business quite nervous. And I've seen some of the chat about moderation and what if somebody put something that isn't appropriate. And for all of those reasons, the business was at that stage quite resistant and nervous. So I sort of never got off the ground. It was almost like two steps forward, three steps back with every conversation. We're going to go we're going to go we're going to go up oh, no we're not we're going to stop because so because there's nervousness so i took a different approach this time i i took a step back to really look at our landscape and thought this is the time that we need to do it yammer is moving over to viva um what is it that's been our blockers and what can i do to achieve success this time for us that it that it's really embraced and it and it provides that value that everybody's looking for with three airports, it is a complex, fast business. Um, we have 500 leadership population. We have a, um, over 6,000 colleagues overall. Um, we, I looked at the Glint, we work with Glint, so you'll have people surveys and really thinking about what are the key things coming out of those surveys that the biz that is important to the business that we can then connect to where Engage can have a part in that. So increasing engagement overall and particularly giving colleagues voices and I'll come to that in a little bit leadership and, and closing that gap, bridging that gap between conversations that might never normally happen and really that personalisation of leaders, that they they become more human and more accessible to people of all levels. Um, and very much that that people at our core are creating that sense of belonging, which, as you'll see through some of the posts that I'm going to share, is very clear that we have that at MAG. But seeing it on the scale that Viva allows that uh, everybody can see it rather than people in that one singular moment has been magnificent for us. Um, I really did my research. I thought about each of those stakeholder groups and who I needed to get the buy in to make this a success and, and enable it and, and for it to sort of grow its own legs and become agile. And so I, I took more time than I had done previously to understand that and understand the pitches and presentations that I need to make that was going to take those boxes for people and absolutely recruiting allies. And this isn't just about doing that pledge of let's go out and find some champions, but it's about finding them at all levels. So we have Exco, which is sort of C-suite, and then we have minus one, minus two, plus our operational colleagues. So thinking about each of them, and I call them influencers rather than champions. I thought it was much more appropriate for the channel. Um, I thought certainly with, with people coming in who love social media, they'll connect with it more and it will feel more prestigious to them. Um, so for me, I felt champion was a bit dated for us, and that's what we've gone with. 
this I'm not going to spend too much time on, but it very much talks about almost a layer down from that slide that I've just gone through and using words that were familiar to us as a business so our leaders could connect with. They made sense to them. So thinking about the language that we're using when we're doing those pitches and those initial cons and why the power of Viva and what it will enable within the business. And, and this is really the key point of starting. So if you're going to do a screenshot, I know we're sharing slides afterwards, but this is a screenshot to take. It's my wing it plan. Always love a good pun at mag. We use the word landed a lot. Let's land it um, or let's take off with success. Um, and so the wing it plan is learning from, I don't want to say my mistakes in the past, but maybe where I've been running at too fast a pace and not, and not taking that step back. Actually, um, if I let's throw some puns in there, if I'm packing my suitcase and planning my route, then this is my my 10 stop plan, where, where, which is going to be be that grounding where I can move it around and tailor it. And that's that is what I hope it might be useful to you. So I'm going to run through each of these as we go through. Um, and apologies, I'm going to get paced because I know that we've got a time slot. So talking very quickly and um, so we talked a bit already about identifying those stakeholders and getting the buy-in um, and and this was really important to me so there's a couple of stats that I really sort of I don't want to say through our our C-suite um, and our, our next level down leadership population but soon communicated with with strong commitment and intentionality but to be very clear that the are, we have operational colleagues and we have leadership desk based colleagues, but only around 50% of those colleagues are reading email. So I guess that means our desk based are and probably our operational aren't. So we're paying for these licenses from Microsoft, but they're not in the habit of, of um, saying, oh, I wonder what emails I've got today. I must check my inbox. And, and that is not their habit of their day, but what they are used to and bringing our leadership population on this understanding, they are used to digital grazing. They're used to, in the evening, whilst they're watching Corrie or waiting for the kettle to boil, or if they're commuting to and from work, they are used to digital grazing. Or when they, they're like me and their kids talking about who's falling out with who at school, and when my hubby's got the football on, I'm digital grazing. And that's how we can communicate with our colleagues and best reach them on a platform that works for them as familiar, it's comfortable, it's less formal, and it allows a conversation because at the moment what they're doing is um, we're saying, here's this really strong formal email with all of these big long words, somebody that you've never met before that you're probably never going to speak to. And by the way, if you've got a query, here's a, here's a nameless inbox that you can go and reply to, but we're not going to have a proper conversation. We'll just send you a three word email back. And, and suddenly, actually, what we're doing is we're breaking all those barriers and we're all same and we're all having these conversations. I linked it to the glimpse, which I thought was really, really important because MAG is very much on where are we at? What do we need to improve? And we do colleague briefings um, uh, half yearly where we stand in front of our people and we say, this is what you asked for and this is what you delivered. So how are we going to deliver that? Well, Viva is going to enable that Viva Engage. And then I used Microsoft. I spoke to other people. I got some other stats. And for me, the most powerful of the two on the, depending on which way you're looking at the screen, the two on the right, we invest millions in business change transformation. I don't know if anybody's been particularly at Manchester Airport. We've got the incredible Terminal 2 transformation. Stance has just been improved, approved for an extension. And we need colleagues to go at that pace and feel they're part of the journey. And again, sending emails and hoping they're on that track just isn't our best effort but using Viva and bringing them with and, and doing listening groups and, and talking to them about trials in the moment and recognizing those brilliant people on the ground that are part of it is what will enable them to just adapt really quickly to that level of business change and for our finance people having that stat around the, the fact that um, the financial targets and, and how this links and certainly our latest presentations for colleague briefings is about ex not not just delivering good service but actually those magical moments when a passenger is walking through and how do we go above and beyond to change somebody's day in a moment and that links to financial targets and it links to happy passengers happy third parties or our, our, our airlines or shop owners or retail so all of that was really really important to get that buy-in the other thing we didn't do, and I'll, I'll go through the structure, but we didn't ask permission. So previously, I had definitely said, is this OK? Are you happy for us to proceed? 
I, we didn't use that language. We just said, um, we want to present our strategy as we're progressing with Viva Engage and it will be going live on the 13th of September. It wasn't a question, it was a commitment that this is part of our strategy, we're going with it. We'd love to converse with you and answer any questions that you have, but we really want you on the journey and we're going to show you the value it's going to bring to your communications and engagement. It was a totally flipped approach and it worked. So we looked at the current structure and we engaged with people that had quietly been on Yammer and it had been working for them and talked about what might work better. We looked at what other companies were doing. I thought this was really interesting that Freya was saying where people write content for right community. All company was like a junkyard. It was just spam a lot. Um, and so all company we have changed to um we change it now that it's just all that content we were sending through those company emails is now, unless it's something really formal that needs to go, financial results would be an email, company structure would be an email, but pretty much everything else now is in all company. So our, our C-suite and internal comms post on all company, but we invite questions. We say, what do you think of this? Let us know we're here to talk. And, and certainly ED and I as well, big events that we're doing around ED and I, all going all company. And journey makers is, is an internal phrase, an internal brand that we use about our journeys here at MAG. But we now have a different airport for each community. Really important because somebody in Stansted probably most primarily does not really want to know about East Midlands and, and Manchester Airport. So we we sign people up automatically to all company and then the airport they're physically located in. They, they are all open communities, so they can join the other communities if they want to be connected to all three, but it's a personal choice. We also have 365 tips and tricks, which I love. It's great to signpost people to that one, leadership and high performance. I've not created these my own. A lot of community managers have done them. Um, our CRGs, we have a women's network, we have Embrace Network, Flowery Pride, mental health, parenting, holiday tips, because we're in airports, so why not? buy and sell and the veterans one is is one of my proudest and again it links to something that Freya said and, and we haven't yet had to remove any comments and it's and it's not the approach that we want to really take if we were forced into that situation we'd address it what happened with uh, our forces day last year or earlier this year is that we missed it it wasn't on our comms calendar nobody had brought it to our attention and we didn't do anything for it our chaplaincy we have we have an in-house chaplaincy and, and also we weren't aware of it through them so somebody quite annoyed quite frustrated went on all company to share with our entire business because we hadn't done this by then how frustrated and hurt they were that we hadn't acknowledged armed forces day and all the, and they were an ex veteran and they had given their time to our country and we hadn't acknowledged that and it was quite vocal quite frustrated um and and verged on inappropriate but it was on that borderline and somebody said have you seen it? i said i've seen it what, what are you going to do about it i'm gonna wait and i'll wait and see what happens next one person who was obviously his mate so they'd obviously discussed it <laughs> He posted it and then that person commented again, totally agree. It's ridiculous. They do all of this for ED&I and, and why aren't they doing it for veterans? And then I carried on waiting and everybody said, aren't you going to edit it? Aren't you to put something? No, I'm going to give it half an hour, an hour. So I did. Okay, I went, had a coffee, I came back and um, no one else commented. So then I leaned in. I did have a chat with a people partner and I said, this is what I think I'm going to put. Are you happy with it? So we were collaborated so people were com the people team were comfortable with it. And then I said, thank you so much for sharing this. And I'm so sorry that we missed it. I really thought I'd taken time to think about your post. And um, we would love to organise a committee like we have our CRGs for ED&I. We'd love a veterans committee. We'd love for you to lead that with us. Would anybody else on here like to join that and help us plan on Forces Day for 2024? And we have Armistice Day coming up. And we'd love to get these communities at each of our airports so you feel acknowledged, heard and part of our communities. It's now got around 100 veterans. They were part of our armistice plans and we're now planning for armed forces and the difference it's made and the amount of content they are posting of when the where they were based and what they were doing and their pictures and sharing memories is phenomenal and i'm super proud that that came out of somebody that posted something quite 
verging on aggressive and, and delicate and made people panic. And I think had that happened, had we done this earlier and I and had we not done it with the approach that we did it this time round, it would have been deleted. And then there would have been an email from the people team to remind them of the policy. And it would have been a different approach. And I totally get with Freya's. It feels a more contentious work environment. But for Mac, it was the first time and it worked well with that approach. So we did the briefings, we did in-person briefings and on teams briefings. And I was really pleased that the majority of our leaders turned up for the briefings. We had about 100 people each time. And as I said, we, we were asking for, I had that email ready to go. So the minute I finished the last briefing, I won the email to all of our colleagues to say, we're, we're launching Viva just to let you know. So there was no going back at that point. Um, and it was really important to me to not have that breathing space for anyone to say, oh, hang on a second. Let's let's take a moment. We didn't. We were committed. We were on the journey. We talk about being on the blue train. If you don't break through, we were on the blue train. We were off. We were going. Um, and then we recruited influencers and we did the same sessions with them to get their buy in. So five, six, seven on our Winget plan is about creative engagement and how it looks exciting. Those team briefings, in-person events. We did pop up events going into the terminals to speak to colleagues in their areas. Um, we put lots of content on our intranet about how to engage. I've got still got hot to, but it should be how to <laughs> and FAQs and videos. And and this is a game which is slightly different, probably quite a bit different than what Freya did, but acceptable use and personal device policy. I put it at number seven. The reason Viva never launched before when it was Yammer as an official comps channel, in my opinion at MAG, is because it was number one on the plan before it was the first thing we all discussed and that's why it didn't happen be it number seven we approached it in a calmer conversation so actually it was it was it was with our compliance team and our gdpr team and our policy team and it was it was about what do we have in place and how is this different to anything else in terms of code of conduct so I'll show you what we did and personal device as well. So this is we talked about approaches, enabling how people can access it, be it through the Teams platform, the web platform, downloading the app. We we educated everybody on the, all the different accesses. Here's what our internet looked like with questions, interactive questions. And then we had digital screens go up. So we explained what Viva Engage was in short and joined the conversation. And then we just had that real impact screen and it pulsed as well, which was quite nice. And for acceptable use, we did have community managers and um, they are all leadership population level. And this is what the only thing that we pushed out around acceptable use. And then we linked to our acceptable use policy, which was already in place because it talks about your conduct and um, it talks about your conduct on email and in person and on social media already. So we didn't create anything new. We utilised what we had and we said it applies. And we said, speak to people online how you would speak to them in person. And you are a MAG employee in a MAG space. And that was as much as we have indulged it. It is there, it's light touch. And if we need to do more, we will address it as we as we grow. And so finally, it was about bringing our leaders onto this journey and moving them from that habit of email. Oh, I get that we've moved away from email and the weed in Viva. But not for my stuff, right? My stuff will still go by email because my stuff's really important. Um, having those conversations and, and being firm and then showing them the benefits of moving over and layering our different comms channels. And, and when they get that interaction, that's when they see the benefit. Um, and then also allowing, teaching them about right channel for right comms. Um, and allowing the space for the communities to grow. And this is how our communities have grown. Um, so this is something that one of our um, security officers in Manchester posted. And this is when I talk about those moments that nobody else would really know, a passenger collapse, it is really sad. Um, and he responded and he called emergency services and he stayed with that passenger in that time. Nobody would have known, but the family came back in and they left a letter for that, that Philip who helped. Not only did he post it, but our managing director, Chris Woodruff of Manchester Airport, saw that post, which he might have just, he might have known, somebody might have told him in, in previous Viva World, and he'd have just gone, that's wonderful. Could you let him know that's wonderful? We appreciate it. Actually, in this situation, because we're Viva, he responded directly. Not only did he say, Philip, this is incredible, 
but he shared his own personal experience of a family loss that he'd had very recently and how much that would have meant he understands how much that would have meant to the family and having that connection from a from an md to somebody on the shop floor was so nice and you can see it was seen by 798 people saw that interaction and saw that post and connected with that story we have rob sawyer who constantly shares all the old makes us feel super old of all the old pictures of the airport we celebrate diwali so everybody shared their diwali pictures our mental health group do lunchtime walks, so they do updates in each airport community. And um, if people want to go, Black History Month, we had steel bands. I'm off this base, and if you're like me, rarely leave my desk. It was great to see and feel part of that energy that was going on in our terminals. And I would not have known about it did we not have Viva Engage. And my favourite is Lego Phil. So not only is Phil a brilliant security officer, but we now have this thing with Lego Phil. Lego Phil posts when he's walking in the hills, um, Lego Phil does have now MD Chris has his own Lego Chris um, and it's become this phenomenon that people are following on Viva Engage and, and we, we love Lego Phil and his adventures. The stats are really important stuff because I know I'm, I'm running over it a few minutes and um, the proof is in the pudding. I did try and come up with a flight one for this but I just couldn't think about it. But we're six weeks in and these were the stats at six weeks in. So if you look at when we were ticking over with Yammer, 32% up on active users, 300% up on our activity counts per month and 750, I hate my maths is right, 750% up on our reaction counts. Even if my maths is wrong um, and my percentages, I would say that just looking at the figures, we've gone up so substantially. It is more used than, than email. We, we're not abandoning email, but it's just understanding the power of each and actually how you layer and reduce, reduce some copy and make it more personalised. Going forward, it's really about continuing those conversations and embedding it using the data and looking at the data to inform. And I think for us, that's where we get that increased buy-in from our leadership so that they are using it and they continue to use it, which they are. Um, empowering those voices, you know, there's a real hand on shoulder approach when you meet people wherever they are and say, oh my God, have you seen it on Viva? And taking that five minutes to show them. And I did that with, a frontline colleague that I met last week and evolving it so we're really looking now at Viva Connections as our evolution and um, increasing what we do with influencers so when I have a, a leader come to me and say I've got this campaign and can you promote it as comms I go do you know what I've got a team of fantastic influencers let me add you to their community on Viva if you post on Viva they will amplify that message to to their populations uh, they're your sales team um, and so we're looking at the content and we're looking how to use those influencers so they feel valued and special and leaders see their value. And that's everything. So I'm sorry I've gone over, but hopefully it's useful. No, Jax, that's that's fantastic. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story. Um, the, the chat has been buzzing away. Um, We've got three minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and take a question from the Q and A and put that to you from uh, Utah, who's asked, you know, it, what does internal comms then use the intranet for? Um, do you still have one? You've mentioned yeah. you do still have one, but what, how does that work in the channel landscape now? I feel that an intranet, or certainly for us, the intranet's more of a library resource. So it's it's we will still post news there. So you have static news articles and people can comment, but they don't tend to. Um, and it's where those fuller articles. So a really good example is we're doing something called Gift Mess where we're asking for donations for our local community. The big article with all the information you need to know is on the Internet. Uh, we would have normally sent an email. So the approach that we had this time, massive article. Then we have a post in each airport to say what is going on about gift miss in your local airport and how can you get involved and here and ask us any questions with your community members. And then the only email that goes out is on a Friday, normally on a Friday, each airport has an email from their MD that goes to all their people and it's got small articles. So we have a very small article and again, it would have normally gone to just the intranet story. So again, no interaction. So now we go, if you've got any questions, you want to connect with our community manager, click here to the Viva Engage post. And if you want the full details, you can find them here on, we call it Magna. So it still has a part to play, but it's it goes back to that redefining really your channels um, and, and 
making them compl- enabling them to complement each other. Mm. That's a really nice way to put it, I think. Yeah. Um, in the last minute, I actually just want to share a, a comment that's coming and get your thoughts on this. So there's a comment in the chat rather than really a, a question around someone who's shared that they have a, uh, a, a VP, I think, who is very anti non work. I, I can't actually read it in the chat because the chat's gone nuts. But ah, here we go. Uh, SVP of corporate comms is strictly against any extra professional communities. Apart from arguing in terms of adoption, i.e. taking the first steps on engage, what other reasonings would there be? Inclusion, diversity. So from your perspective, if you've got a leader who's against, we, you know, we can't have this non-business activity, what's your response to that? Um, I think that it's really difficult because I think they see the value almost once it's going. We definitely had leaders that didn't lean in to begin with in launch. And what they've done is they've seen the others and they've seen the value. So again, that's not if that if that is the person that is going to say, no, you can't no, you can't do it, then um, I'm totally happy to have a longer discussion about an approach that might work for you and things that work for us because I've had those conversations. But if he's one of several and he he or she is is not not on the, on that blue train, then then let them sit where they are. That's OK. And go with the others. Um, the the we had a brilliant leader, the one that did that high performance. That's the leader who absolutely believes in this. And he, when I was doing those presentations at the really first stage, talking about this is what we're doing, we're going to launch, we want you to be part of it. He then came. I knew he was super keen for us to launch it. So I said, any other comments? And he goes, oh, I said, oh, we got a question from Pete. Surprise. And then Pete said, oh, hi, Jack, thanks so much for letting me speak. I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to say, I think this is brilliant. I can't wait to use this. Um, And I've already thought about some communities I'm going to launch. So having the influencers at that level, and then if those don't want to come, they can just sit on the sidelines and watch because that interaction between R&D and Manchester and Philip and the power that that did is... is incredible and and when you align that with those stats about financial performance business change people staying in the business people referring people to so all the money and i hope nobody's on here that's a recruitment consultant that gets upset with me but all the money that you spend on recruitment consultants actually if you think about refer a friend initiatives and what you could save if your people are super happy connected feel involved want to be there feel valued and then go off and, and and recruit for you like is that not a reason Mm. Good response. Great point. It's the comment that's just popped in the chat as I said that phrase. So yeah, thanks, Jax. Fantastic presentation. I'll say the same to you as I said to Freya. There's a few questions in the Q&A section. If you do have time to pop in and have a look at those and give responses, that would be really great. Um, and for anyone on the call, you can you can find Jax on LinkedIn and fire any questions to her. Um, there's a, a font of knowledge right there. So thank you so much for thanks sharing for your story.